Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Now Let's Review, and we're gonna be reviewing the Sir Cooter Mate Scooter next on Now Let's Review. So I would just like to get this right out of the way here, the price. I am really surprised. Uh, this is an 800 watt scooter uh, motor in the back mm -hmm. with full suspension. So I thought like, uh, I don't know, 14, 1500 bucks. What'd you think? Yes, I was thinking at least a thousand dollars, but this is 699 right now. It was down from 899 apparently on their website. It looks like one of those prices that is always down to 699, but for that price, it's something to think about. It is, it's got a nice big deck. It's a heavy scooter. So, I mean, they call it a commuter and it really depends on what you're looking for. If, if this, if you're going on kind of long commutes then this is kind of the style you might want because it can maybe soak up some bumps. There's some nice features about it, but also keep in mind that it is a heavy scooter. So we've got the handlebar down low right now just to get it in shot, but you can raise it up higher if you want to. Most people would. And I would... that does come with its first downside. Yeah. And that is, um, you know, it's got sort of the typical uh, locky, unlocky thing with the tightening. Um, but what that means is uh, because they chose a round stem for the handlebar, it means that your handlebar can be not perfectly aligned even with the wheels. When, even when you tighten it? Um, you can tighten it into the proper orientation, but if you're not paying attention, like if you had this oh, folded up either in the back of your car or on the train, it means you have to take an extra few seconds to get it lined up and it's not not easy. I get you. When you're getting off a bus or off the train, you want to just kind of flip it and go, there. right? Um, let's talk about this mechanism then, because that's another part of a commuter. If you're putting it onto a train or a bus, you're going to want to fold this down a lot. And so there's, it's nice. You can fold in the handlebars. So why don't we show that yep. and just be very careful. This type of system we've seen before mm -hmm. can pinch you. Yes. So you pull out on these little locking rings um, and these aren't folding down that well right now because we do have the bag that came with it attached to the front so that's something to consider if this is a commuter if this yeah if even if this were up higher the bag would still probably be in your way i i like the bag the bag is a, a cool feature because a lot of times you're riding on a scooter and if you don't want to wear a backpack you have no place to put like your glasses or your wallet so that's a nice feature but makes it a little top heavy depending on what you got in there mm -hmm. like water bottle or something it is hard to get that thing out uh, because you pretty much have to open this up entirely all the, way, all the yeah. way let me just show that and so like whatever you had in there could yeah. fall out so be careful of that and like jesse just said once this is here you can't fold down the handlebars easily right now without the bag and maybe you're going to do it without the bag because that's the kind of commuter you are and you're going to have your backpack with your laptop in it you're not going to put your laptop in this it just won't fit if you do fold down the handlebars it's fairly compact um, then let's talk about this folding mechanism. So they have kind of the safety system here where you pull like a grenade style pin, not all the way out, it just is uh, spring loaded. And that allows you to pull on this uh, red tab here. Okay. So you pull that, now it still isn't folding, but you can tell that there's some, some give and then you have to pull on this tab and that allows the scooter to fold down and then it locks again into a thing so you can lift it, although Please don't, it's so heavy. Yeah, you just mentioned it's really heavy. It's 48 and a half pounds. For me, I, I mean, I don't think I really wanna heft that onto a train or a bus. So as a commuter scooter, don't think of it as one that you're gonna get onto a separate transportation platform. You're pretty much gonna ride this to work park it in the lobby kind of thing. Yeah, it really depends on what your situation is in your city or whatever. Um, but yeah, like I'm trying to think of getting this onto my particular train station, which of course has stairs taking you up over to the platform and down the stairs. Um, of course, there's an elevator, but you know, do I want to make the person in the wheelchair wait for me to, so I can zip to work going 20 miles an hour. I don't know. Another thing to keep in mind is that when it's folded, you wanna really make sure to shut it off because you can do that, which is a little uh, scary. So that's, you know, lots of scooters don't have any kind of safety mechanism for that, um, but it's just something to keep in mind. That's true. I mean, if you're getting on and off things, you gotta make sure it's off. You might forget and then uh, somebody kicks this and it's gonna go, you know, flying across whatever mode of transportation you're doing. Now to, to fold it back up, uh, you simply, uh, reverse the steps here, nice and simple. And this, I think, is a pretty decent locking mechanism. It makes me feel good that this isn't gonna buckle underneath me while I'm riding. But just keep in mind, as a commuter, you're probably your hands are full with your briefcase or whatever. And sure. so if this isn't a one-handed operation, it's a two-handed operation. Yeah, I, again, I think that if this is a commuter, this is probably an in-city commuter where this is like just a vehicle as opposed to 
a, an intermodal system of transportation uh, within your city, you know, getting on buses and subways like that. So let's talk about lighting. It's got these really cool turn signals on mm -hmm. the side. Not particularly bright. I don't know if you can see this. We're in a fairly bright room, but in direct sunlight, there's no way anyone's gonna And you it. are down low, and you gotta think the person that you need to tell that you're turning is behind you. So, you know, it's, it's nice that they're there, but I don't know how useful they are. Kind of a fun thing. And now can you turn on the headlight for me? Yeah. We had the headlight on today and it was very bright and I am not able to turn it on now. It has a dedicated button on the control panel um, and I've been pressing it and it's not working. So I think that the button might be broken because I'm able to get the horn to work, ready? Woo, nice and loud, um, which is part of the same assembly, but I can't show you the light. So I don't know if something broke. Um, we're gonna talk to Sir Cooter about that, um, but that is too bad because it was a very nice light when it was working. Um, a little low though. For me, as I'd like it up here so that more people can see me. That's true. I will say though that a low light, especially at night, helps you see bumps mm. and potholes um, because that light is a nice low raking light and you can see when there's perturbations in the surface of whatever you're riding on. Um, but it does have a brake light, which I think is rather nice. And it um, has these cool, uh like blue lights. Yeah, so it definitely gives it a bit more visibility, but everything is down low, and that's why I'd wanna talk about today's sponsor, Lumos. Yeah, this has become one of my favorite helmets. It's really lightweight. It's the kickstart by Lumos, and it's really easy. I just have to hit one button in the back, and I've got my light. If I want it to flash like this, that's great. I can also just tap it while I'm riding, and I can make it flash faster. I can make it solid. Um, so that's really easy to use. And uh, you definitely want a nice helmet when you're riding a scooter. Please don't ever ride a scooter without a helmet. I've heard of way too many injuries for that. And the other thing, if you're looking for really good head protection is to look for MIPS, M-I-P-S. And Lumos has these helmets as well. You can tell because they, uh, first of all, put a MIPS sticker on it, but it also has uh, this interior liner, which allows the helmet to kind of slip around your head. A big problem when you get into an accident is not just the uh, blunt force trauma. It's also the fact that a helmet while saving your head is going to get kind of caught on, on like the pavement or something and it's going to jerk your head and that's going to hurt your brain. Uh, MIPS will allow the helmet to do the jerking and your head to stay relatively safe um, in an accident. So that's just something, a little PSA. I want you all to stay safe wear a helmet, guys. But back to some stats for this. So the 800 watt motor in the back, they claim that it's 800 watt capacity. I'm guessing that it's in the 500 watt nominal area, although it, it did feel quite powerful uh, powering up that hill. All right, there's eco mode, standard and sport on this. Um, I was riding a lot in standard today and it felt really good going up hills, it was no problem. Yeah, they basically, they're just three different speed modes, eco, um, I think they do actually limit the, mo the motor uh, torque, um, but then it gets you up to around eight-ish miles an hour. Standard gets you up to around like 18 and turbo gets you up to like 21, which is a nice cruising speed. Actually 28 miles an hour if you want to unlock it. It depends on your jurisdiction. Oh, unlock it. Yes, I so see. depending on where you are, you can unlock it if you want to and go up to 28 miles an hour. That's up to you. Yes. What we found out going downhill, it's got not only, you know, standard brakes, um, the disc brakes, Breaks, but it's got regen braking, which is very, very nice. Means you're gonna put a little bit of energy back into the battery, but it's also gonna reduce wear on the brakes, which is uh, really nice because that could either lead to brake failure at some point or just more maintenance. Um, so it's nice that for, I would say slower braking applications where you have the, the time, a slight squeeze of either of the two brakes is going to turn on the e-brake. And that's a very nice feature. And you're probably wondering about the range. 25 miles is the stated range. And look, it really depends on so many factors. It depends on how flat the surface is, how many hills, um, how fast you're pushing it. And so- And how heavy you are. And how heavy you are. Now this will hold up to 440 pounds. I mean, so this is, if you're on the heavier side and you need a scooter that'll take you, that's, this is a really good stat. And let's talk about the 440 pounds for a minute because I stood on this thing and normally with, you know, scooters with dual suspension, you step on them and there's a little bit of squish. I stepped on this and it acted like there was no suspension at all. So I'm feeling like both the front and the rear suspension was tuned for that 450 pounds, which is very cool if you weigh 450 pounds and you want a scooter that can actually accommodate you um, because a lot of the, you know, dual suspension scooters that you step on they're gonna squish a little, and if you weigh more, they're gonna squish more. And it could be to the point where you're just bottoming out the suspension and right. it's gonna feel very uncomfortable if you're riding it. So this, I think, is tuned either for a much heavier person than me or 
it has really bad suspension. And I can't tell you which, because Zach and I would need to ride this together. Right. Um, and speaking of riding together, you could ride this as a two-person scooter. Uh, you know, I don't recommend it. But don't do that at all, but in a pinch. But people do it, and do see it, them this would it. be the scooter to do it. And with. I see them wipe out all the time right. on the internet, and it's usually funny, but it's not because they're hurt. Right. One of my favorite things about this is that it's got these really nice, gnarly tires, 10 inch solid tires, which means there's no air. And okay, it won't soak up the bumps as well as it would with pneumatic tires, but you'll never have to worry about replacing an inner tube. And now that we've been doing this for a few years, we've replaced a lot of inner tubes. And let me tell you, it isn't easy. Especially on powerful e-scooters, the inner tubes pop all the time. Right, because you're putting so much torque that there's a lot of slippage between the tube and the tire wall. And if there's any like sand or grit in there, it can just rip them and, and pop them. So I'm actually glad that you're not gonna have to really worry about this. Yeah, I mean, what you're losing in comfort, and for sure, you're losing something in comfort, but you're gaining in just peace of mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. One I, less thing to worry about. We've popped the scooter tires and they're a bear to fix. Yeah. They're awful and you're almost always gonna you know, be popping one of the motor ones, because again, the, the torque right. is gonna pop the motor one and you can watch our video on that yeah it oh if i had to never do that again that's what i would choose so having a solid tire is excellent five to six hour charge time so uh basically at work you can charge it up and probably have a full charge on your way home and the same thing at home at night so talk to me about this throttle because this is a very different throttle than i've experienced before it's a thumb throttle but uh, it has a very long throw how did and you like it? It took me a little bit of getting used to. This is definitely a new throttle that I haven't seen before. It doesn't feel particularly nice. So this is like a hair throttle. What do you mean hair throttle? It doesn't take much force at all to push oh, it. Oh, okay. Um, but it has a ton of throw. I would say that's what, like? Two at inches. Least, at least 60 degrees of yeah. throw. Um, so you're taking your thumb from behind your, your hand to in front of your hand. Uh, all the way. You kind of have to choke up on the throttle to get it to go all the way. And that can be annoying, but it does give you a lot of granularity in your speed control. A lot of, especially thumb throttles, I feel like are kind of like, woo, woo. Right. This one felt very uh, granular <laughs> and linear all the way up. Um, so that is a nice feature. It doesn't feel particularly robust. I feel like right. I could snap it if I wasn't being careful. Yeah, it could get caught on something. I agree with you. Like it's this big and long. If this could snap, exactly. And it, I wish it were metal. I really do. It, as yeah. plastic, it shouldn't be. Um, it does have cruise control. I don't, I'm not a big fan of cruise control because basically what that means is you, you're going along at a certain speed. You'll hear it beep after about six seconds and then you're locked in at that speed. And it's locking in at the max speed of the speed setting that you set it to. Right. So you have uh, Eco Standard Turbo and you can actually be in cruise control, change the speed, and it will accelerate, which is kind of scary, right. um, up to whatever the top speed of that mode is. I mean, if you have a very long commute on a very open stretch, it's probably a nice feature, but mm -hmm. I, on scooters, for the most part, I want to always be in control because if you hit something, you want to be able to stop very quickly. Especially, you know, in the early days when the scooters went 15 miles an hour, you know, 15 miles an hour, you got plenty of time to do whatever. When this thing's going, especially if you unlock it and it's going 28 miles an hour, yeah, that's, uh, fast. that's a little fast to have it in cruise control. That's kind of like, uh, you know, putting it in cruise control going 90 on the highway. It's like, right. are you insane or are you just on the Autobahn? Right. Uh, the battery is a 48 volt, 12.5 amp hour battery. That may not mean much to you, but it's basically a very big battery, which is making this a very heavy scooter, but that's what gives you the range. And what gives you the power. I would say, yeah, for the price, I'm very impressed. Uh, when I bought my first electric scooter, it cost $600. This cost $100 more. My scooter back then had a 250 watt motor. This has uh, up to 800 watts. Um, the range on mine was like 15 miles. This again claims 25. Is the build quality amazing? No, but you're getting a lot of value out of this thing. And I think that that along with the solid tires, which was an excellent choice, makes this definitely something to consider if you're looking for a cheap commuting option and you don't wanna to have to buy a car. Yeah. So check out the link below down to Circuiter and see if this is the right fit for you. They've also got some other models as well, especially if you're gonna go off-roading, they've got those models down there. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time on Now Let's Review.